So good morning, everyone. The time is 11 o'clock and we are here to learn something from Dr. Tarun. Let's welcome Dr. Tarun. Dr. Tarun, if you can hear me. Yes, sir. thank you, sir. Perfect. Thank you. So participants, if you can uh, see, see the screen, see both of us on Zoom, uh, please type Y if you can see so that we know, yes, you can hear us and see us. Type Y if you can see us and hear us. Perfect. Thank you, Sai Swarup, Ramesh, Gayatri, Kavita, Pawarji. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes, perfect. Perfect. So we are here to exp explore the learning to a new subject, a new topic, which is, you know, part of our daily life, but we don't tend to discuss it. It's called the pharmaceutical expired products management and also the biomedical waste. It is generated on every single in every single house, but then we don't know how to manage it properly, right? So Dr. Tarun, uh, he would be walking us through that and help us understand how we can, as an individual contributor, manage it effectively at our house and also in our society. So before we begin, uh, let me welcome Dr. Tarun, uh, who has done MPharm Pharmaceutics and also PhD, and he is the Professor and Dean, School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, MVN University, Palwal, Haryana. Welcome, Dr. Tarun. Just wave your hand so that participants can see you. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, perfect. Thank you, sir. So Dr. Tarun comes with more than 15 years of experience in academia. He has published more than 38 papers in national and international journals. He has two patents to his credits. He has authored four textbooks for pharmacy students, and he has got a lot of awards and recognition uh, for various activities that he has been doing. He also conducts social awareness on the prevention and management of life-threatening diseases. He has been instrumental in driving awareness on biomedical and pharmaceutical waste in various parts of India. And he is instrumental in creating you know, awareness in the society at large. So I welcome Dr. Tarun and he'll, I'll request him to walk us uh, you know, more about what he's been doing, how he's been doing, and what kind of changes it has brought uh, in the society with this small steps that we are taking. So welcome Dr. Tarun and the stage is all yours. Um, I'm stopping the screen sharing, yes. yes. Uh, first of all, sir, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, giving, pleasure, me another, giving me another chance. Uh, like uh, one we did in the last year and yes. uh, I hope uh, like uh, all the participants uh, who were present in the last uh, presentation uh, got some idea about the same. And uh, today, like uh, the topic is a bit similar. And uh, if I talk about uh, the topic is pharmaceutical and biomedical waste. And uh, like everyone knows, like this type of waste is, waste is accumulating at our house. And everyone is talking about uh, only industry point of view, like uh, from the industry point of view only, like no one is bothered about the waste, which is accumulated at home. So here, uh, like uh, we will see some uh, procedures, we will see some methods, how we can uh, basically uh, uh, like avoid unused medications because uh, accumulation of unused medications will lead to some serious consequences, which we will uh, like uh, see in the slides. And uh, there are some uh, measures also, like uh, uh, I think uh, some of us uh, may be curious to know about like, uh, can we recycle it? Can we reuse it? Uh, because like uh, it is a, a thing which is uh, for the human health. And uh, if it is a waste, and if we are using that particular waste for the human health, then obviously it is hazardous. So we have to take care, like we can use, but in a better way that I will suggest you in the slides also. And uh, if I talk about that biomedical waste, uh, biomedical waste, uh, like, uh, and the pharmaceutical waste, pharmaceutical waste comes under that biomedical waste only. But I have emphasized pharmaceutical waste separately because like everyone is bothering about biomedical waste. There is uh, like a CPCB, which is uh, actually uh, take care of uh, this uh, uh, biomedical waste treatment plants. But no one is bothered about pharmaceutical waste. What to do with the pharmaceutical waste? There are n number of medical representatives. Like uh, they have n number of samples, which is like uh, at their 
home so what they are doing uh, like uh, i have asked a few uh, students also so uh, like uh, what what you are doing with the pharmaceutical uh, this unused medications so they simply reply matlab bolna nahi chahiye sir like main sell kar deta hu second main jala deta hu so these are the types of answers i got so this is an alarming situation so if uh, like uh, as a pharmacist if we are thinking like that then uh, what we can expect from the normal individual so this session will highlight on that particular thing uh, which basically uh, gives you the reasons why this type of waste accumulated at home second what are the procedures what are the disposable techniques by which we can avoid these types of waste so i will start the session with uh, uh this introduction i hope uh, everyone uh, like uh, got what uh, we are going to discuss in this particular session so may i start the session sir yes please sir please and okay. participants please be interactive and you know we would love to interact with you during the entire session if you have any questions make a note of those questions and we'll give a chance you you can directly ask uh, dr varun during the q and a session and keep writing notes because you know we don't know a single idea can change our lives right so that's yeah. the whole objective of all these sessions that we are doing uh, you know to get new perspectives new uh, new ideas from you know renowned people in the field and you know share ideas and you know knowledge with each other and that's the whole objective we have been doing this session so please make notes please be interactive and spend this one hour uh positively with this session you know let this one hour not be just like other sessions wherein you keep on mute and keep doing other things and you tend to miss out the you know important talk so please don't do that uh, my request is you know to keep a tab on every presentation slide that is happening uh, you know make notes and keep your questions ready for the uh, speaker dr tarun and we'll take up the questions during the q and a session so stay tuned and i hope you enjoy the session uh Yes, Doctor Tarun. Please go on. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, one thing I liked uh, about uh, your basically conversation, uh, you have uh, given a hint uh, to all the participants. Like uh, you should not only ask, you can suggest also. Absolutely. Uh, because like uh, what we are observing in some presentations, uh, like uh, uh, a presenter is presenting the screen and he is delivering the lecture. uh and uh, like there are some participants uh, who are, who is only asking the questions but uh, like if you are suggesting if you have any idea we are ready to accept it if they are like uh, for the betterment of the society absolutely absolutely so it is, so it is my humble request to everyone please go ahead with some suggestive ideas also and uh, maybe like uh, your idea may be incorporated in our next presentation Absolutely, sir. Uh, Doctor Tarun, kindly switch on your video as well, so okay, participants okay. can see. Thank you. Yeah, yes, Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Go on, sir. Thank you. Just a second. You are on the first slide. Yes, sir. It is not moving actually. Oh, is it? Okay, okay. that's why. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. so i think everyone knows about this mission swachh bharat abhiyan so like you know what is swachh bharat abhiyan uh, that was the program which is initiated by our honorable prime minister uh, for cleaning uh, the earth and uh, by this means uh, we can assume like uh, we are only cleaning the top most layer of the earth because uh, the kind of the chemicals which we are basically using in day to day life in the laboratories or in the Uh, like uh, high level of industries uh, these are going directly into the earth crust and uh, like uh, these types of things deteriorating our uh, nutritional power of the soil as well as aquatic life so uh, coming to the main thing uh, which is uh, basically the part of our presentation what is biomedical waste so like biomedical waste you know uh, it is a waste basically like uh, when we are uh, like uh, when we fall ill then we go to a visit to a doctor and uh, before uh, basically uh, giving any treatment to the patient uh, doctor usually diagnose and uh, we uh, go for uh, the diagnostic test so any waste which is generated during the diagnosis treatment or immunization of human beings or the animals or the kind of things which is uh, used in the research 
so that type of waste uh, is known as your biomedical waste so what comes under biomedical waste so if we see the classification this is a broad classification of the biomedical waste here we have infectious waste we have pathological waste we have uh, pharmaceutical waste genotoxic waste chemical waste heavy metal waste pressurized containers radioactive waste so i am not going to discuss each and everything in detail but i will give you an idea like uh, what comes under infectious pathological and other types of waste but i will emphasize on biomedical as well as pharmaceutical waste so here you see the infectious waste Uh, waste uh, which is uh, like uh, suspected to contain infectious pathogens uh, bacteria virus parasites or fungi in sufficient quantity to cause a disease so that is infectious waste and which includes the category like culture and stocks of the infectious agents which is like uh, we are going to use in the laboratories and the waste from the surgery infected animals from the laboratories so these comes under infectious waste and like if i talk about pathological waste then we have tissues organs body parts human fetuses and the animal carcass blood and body fluids these comes under this thing sharp waste you can see needles are there blades are there knives are there infusion sets are there so these comes under sharp waste now this is our pharmaceutical waste it includes expired unused split and contaminated pharmaceutical products drugs vaccines and cia and here you see the genotoxic waste it is highly hazardous because it may have mutagenic teratogenic carcinogenic and it raises serious safety problems both inside hospitals and after disposable should be given because disposable uh, or disposal of medicine is uh, not the prime requisite actually after disposal of uh, biomedical waste what you are doing like uh, is there a landfilling procedures or you are like uh, buried in a tank or like something like that you have to take care it includes uh, cytostatic drugs vomit urine or feces from the patients treated with drugs next is your chemicals like uh, this type of chemicals we are using in our laboratories and uh, we generally don't bothered about that particular thing what we are doing with that type of waste because uh, this is uh, like in the industry we usually have seen effluent treatment plant but in the lab like uh, like i'm very sorry to say uh, in the pharmaceutical industry or in the pharmaceutical institutions or in the engineering institutions or in the medical institutions uh, i haven't seen any effluent treatment plant there is stp plant uh, available in uh, like each and every institution or in the industry also but uh, no one bother about uh, to uh, like uh, start this uh, effluent treatment plant uh, it is uh, consist of discarded solid chemicals liquid chemicals gaseous chemicals chemical waste uh, which is hazardous or non hazardous it may be like toxic having corrosive nature it is flammable reactive and genotoxic now like if you see here this is a heavy metal waste like if i talk about uh, thermometer then uh, the waste of mercury is there and it is highly toxic like everyone knows about this thing batteries broken thermometers blood pressure goes now this is the pressurized container waste here you see many types of gas are used in the healthcare and are often stored in the pressurized cylinder cartridge and the aerosol can most common gases used in the healthcare includes anesthetic gases ethylene oxide oxygen compressed air this is i mean in the pressurized one now uh, this is a big challenge actually radioactive waste uh, it includes x rays beta particles gamma rays emitted by the radioactive substance and uh, alpha particles you know about alpha particle they are having the low penetration power beta particles are negatively charged uh, negatively or positively charged electrons with significant ability to penetrate human skin also and there is gamma radiations gamma radiations are uh, like uh, electromagnetic radiations which is similar to the x rays so this is uh, like i have discussed about uh, uh, only uh, the types of waste but uh, this is a uh, scene uh, where you can see like uh, if i talk about whole india then uh, scenario is a little bit different uh, this green signal indicates like uh, they are having less waste than the treatment capacity and if we compare it with uh, the states which is red in color 
it is having burden actually they are generating more than uh, their treatment capacity so if they are generating more waste so you can imagine like if waste is more and there is no uh, treatment capacity of the plant then what they are doing with that type of waste i am uh, giving you an example of uh, delhi only uh, like in the last session like uh, which happened in the last year i have discussed about uh, there are few industries available like uh, treatment uh, industry which is available in the uh, narela west delhi region uh, which are recycling this product also and it is uh, like uh, very much hazardous because dr the dr tarun i'm sorry uh, we can't see you okay 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 fine sir fine yeah you are back thank you thank you so you're talking about narela yes sir yes sir so like uh, if i talk about uh, this particular waste then uh, 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 biomedical waste are treated in uh, that particular reason and uh, they are not bothered about the health they are uh, creating uh, n number of things from like uh, disposable plates disposable spoons and uh, like uh, the toys uh, for the kids so uh, you can imagine like uh, if we are uh, treating this type of waste uh, and uh, if we are preparing this type of products uh, from this particular waste then uh, what can happen so this uh, why this um, like uh, waste is double or triple uh, because of the pandemic situation because uh, like uh, you know like uh, during second wave of uh, corona uh, like it like uh, only happened for a uh, two months but uh, that has given a tremendous challenge actually to the india like in the first wave like everyone was enjoying at their home like uh, they are preparing uh, different kinds of foods in their home but like everyone was serious during the second pandemic second uh, second wave uh, because like uh, lots of mortality happen in that particular wave uh, slide is uh, rotated uh, the slide is not moving is it yes 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 i am stuck to the slide okay yes, maybe you could close and uh, retry sir yes sir yes sir no yeah sir. it 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 is now happening yes i can see uh, mint Right. Yes, I think it is because of the bandwidth. Because uh, like I am not at a oh, place. Oh, okay. Uh, the, uh, that's why I am stopping the video. Because oh, okay, uh, okay, no problem, sir. You go yes, on. No yes, problem. Sir. No problem, sir. That's fine. That's fine. So, <clears throat> this is uh, some of the uh, like uh, uh, pictures from uh, uh, the news uh, channels or the newspapers. Delhi biomedical waste treatment facilities under pressure due to the increased load. So, what we can do? Uh, this is the main question because uh, like the uh, treatment facilities. Uh, like everyone is talking about the medical facilities the medical fa facilities are not available but uh, like uh, the kind of a waste which is generated uh, during this pandemic situation is also under pressure due to the increased load here you see uh, like uh, second slide just check we can see that uh, mint paper uh, screen sir yes sir this covid 19 delhi biomedical yes business. yes that's right mm -hmm. you uh, you can see here uh, yeah. like uh, in one year india has generated 56000 tons of biomedical waste this is uh, like a big figure and uh, <clears throat> the states like state wise bifurcation is given uh, maharashtra kerala gujarat tamil nadu delhi uttar pradesh karnataka like uh, these are some states which has uh, produced large number of uh, waste i don't understand what happened with the slides because every time i like yeah looks like it is stuck sir yes sir Okay. Maybe we could do another thing. Uh, if uh, you could just convert that into a PDF and then start sharing the PDF screen. Maybe if if you are in the in front of a computer, or you just send an email to me, I'll do it right away. No problem, sir. Okay. 
so participants uh, stay tuned i know you can oh. start thinking about it it's a huge problem that we are facing right now with respect to pharmaceutical and biomedical waste so here you see uh, yes we we can see now yeah uh, this is a small video which will uh, give you uh, some idea actually uh, like uh, what we have can do with the unused medicines well many things yes sir perfect yes. if they're taken by someone they weren't prescribed for harm if accidentally taken by a child or pet danger or even death if not used as directed unused or expired medicines may be hiding right in your home in bathrooms kitchens bedrooms purses and anywhere you store medicines so why put your family at risk safely dispose of unused or expired medicines before they can do harm there are many ways to get rid of them the best option is to find a drug take back location this could be a local pharmacy or a police station these take back locations may offer on site medicine drop off boxes mail back programs or in home disposal products DEA's webpage can help you find a take back location near Yeah, it's stuck again uh, on the diversion collision uh, control yes, division slide. Uh, sorry, participants, we are facing this internet issue, so stay tuned. Uh, you know, we'll be back again in few seconds. So I am just uh, leaving now, and uh, I will join again. Uh, I think I can see like what is the problem. Maybe, sir, we can uh, you know send the link of this video on to the participants on chat. Maybe they'll watch later on, and we'll continue with the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So participants will send the link of this video later on. Uh, we'll continue with the presentation because of the low bandwidth that Dr. Tarun's place, and we'll try to finish up the presentation on time. Thank you. So, um, here you see, uh, like I have discussed about uh, the prevalence of unused medication at home. So there are uh, various reasons actually about uh, that uh, prevalence of unused medication in home and it has been uh, increased dramatically actually and uh, we will uh, discuss about the reasons only here <clears throat> like what are the various reasons and how we can reduce and uh, <clears throat> what we can observe like uh, during this pandemic situation or before this pandemic situation or maybe the, after this pandemic situation like uh, paracetamol like what we can say crocin or a disprint tablet we always have in our first aid box so non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs among the most frequently wasted medication and most of the public just dispose of their expired medication in the trash or like in the toilet so uh, what are the various reason first is the non adherence second one is the death and third one is the medication change these are the reason which lead to the medication accumulation and which ultimately lead to the wastage and there are some uh, like uh, there are no like uh, policies return, uh, related to the return of the medication and the public is also unaware about the thing we are careless too and there are some reasons in india where literacy rate is not so much high so these may lead to the like uh, adverse economic as well as environmental impact also there will be economic burden as well as environmental impact now like uh, this is uh, one of the smart medicine cabinet uh, which has emerged to reduce the medication waste the reason is uh, this is a, a just kind of a robot uh, in which you have to feed the information and it will give you an alarm it will tell you like you have to take this medication you have to take this medication this will reduce your non adherence but if we are at office then ultimately like uh, the forgetfulness uh, will be our primary reason now how medication are wasted medications are wasted by like uh, some of the prominent things which is by the household healthcare providers or the regulations if like if we compare the household cause a major cause is uh, 50% like if i talk about that is the non adherence to the medication taking Uh, and the failure to remember taking one own medicine 
and irregular behavior lifestyle came next after non adherence because the reason is that uh, we people are too much busy and if we are too much busy then uh, uh, then it may lead to uh, some kind of a uh, problems also in which one is uh, this uh, non adherence now i will tell you like uh, what are the uh, what comes under non adherence and uh, why non adherence results actually uh, when a patient uh, does not initiate the medication uh, medication non adherence is the primary reason and it may be because of the scarcity of the patient awareness like many patients are unaware of the importance of taking their medication in a timely manner they don't know like uh, what is the benefit of taking the medicine in a, a timely manner which leads to the medication wastage and it is what we can say it is a directly proportional relationship like if you are aware then you are taking your medication on time if you are unaware then you are like you will uh, losing your medication and it will lead to the accumulation second is inconvenient experience sometime non adherence happen because of this reason because when patient find it disruptive to take certain medication because like i am sharing an example uh, like uh, if a young patient like uh, having an age of 3 year or 4 year or 5 year or 10 year it is suffering uh, he is suffering from type 1 diabetes and if he is suffering from type 1 diabetes then he has to take insulin injection also so due to the fear and the pain caused by the needle he may not take their medication on time and like if we are not taking the medication on time it will like accumulate at our home next reason is side effect like we are not here to take the medication like if you are taking any medication if we find any kind of a side effect then immediately we stop that particular medication and we immediately consult to the physician or to the retail pharmacist like this uh, medicine is creating this type of side effect kindly suggest what to do he will give you an alternative then like you have purchased 10 medication out of this you have taken only one uh, because of the side effect Uh, you have not used that nine medication and even you don't think ki we have to uh, we can we return this medication to the retail pharmacist no you don't bother about them because the price of the medication is low that's why you keep it and you keep that particular medication at your home only in the first aid box next is the low self efficacy like you know like medication might become wasted when disused by individual because like uh, there are some people like uh, they think they are capable of treating them, themselves in a different way without taking their medication so this may lead to again accumulation next is the overconfidence accumulation of unused medications occurs in the house of overconfident people because like uh, what they do uh, they just basically bypass medication uh, what uh, i'm just giving you an example like if a patient is suffering from hypertension patient uh, they think like they can treat themselves uh, like uh, with their uh, own uh, um, like uh, stereotype uh, things like uh, they will do yoga they will uh, go for exercise daily like beside this we have to go for a treatment also which is suggested by the physician like if you are doing yoga then it's okay if you are going for a regular walk then it's okay but doctor has prescribed some medication also along with that uh, like uh, the things which uh, which is uh, which the instructions given by the physician but we usually forget to take the medication and it may like uh, may be a part of your first aid box next is influence of other household members this is one of the most important thing like uh, what many patients may worry about that it is necessary not to underestimate children ability because like they what they do like sometime parents attitude may complicate medication usage rather than helping children to adhere to their medication so this is a big uh, problem next is a lifestyle and the event uh, like everyone uh, like uh, must be agree with this particular point because lifestyle affect the adherence to the medication like everyone is having the busy schedule and a fast course of life so some patients may miss their dose due to this particular point like if we are well organized then we will never forget to take our medication like if we are uh, visiting any place suppose uh, uh, like uh, there is uh, today is saturday and tomorrow is sunday you are planning for outing and uh, you are visiting some place but 
everything you keep in your uh, like uh, car or what you can say but you forgot about uh, your medication sometime patient age like uh, if we compare the adult people with the geriatric as well as the pediatric then there are higher chances of in, uh, like non adherence uh, with uh, the geriatric patient as well as the pediatric patients why because uh, we have to uh, always like ask Uh, the pediatric patient uh, have you taken the medication have you taken the medicine uh, similarly with the case of geriatric patient they sometimes forget to take and like uh, forgetfulness is uh, a key role in missing dose of medication like uh, if we uh, conclude a study na like if we uh, go for a survey then uh, last point will uh, will be na- will be on the top uh, uh, top list because like uh, we usually prefer uh, we usually forget the things and there are other reasons also like apart from this there are other household reason uh, like uh, which uh, happened during second wave of corona fear of medication shortage like some patient uh, like i have heard about uh, the shortage of paracetamol uh, dolo and uh, some patients have accumulated Uh, approximately uh, like uh, 100 tablets of paracetamol at their home because like uh, someone has created the rumor paracetamol is uh, like uh, having the shortage so you can purchase all the paracetamol because it is uh, going to be part of our daily life now because uh, the corona is there and uh, it will affect each and every one in the family suppose in a family uh, we are four members then uh, approximately if we take tid three times in a day then uh, like if uh, the fever continues for the 5 days then uh, it will be 15 so multiplied by 4 60 so we can can we purchase uh, we can purchase uh, 100 tablet we can purchase 50 tablets and there is no need actually but this uh, may lead to the accumulation next is the improper storage of medication this is again one of the uh, biggest uh, reason actually uh, because we people don't understand the storage condition also and medication misplacement like missing or losing a medication can lead to the wastage because patient seeks a replacement for the missed medication baad mein kabhi mil gayi to then it's okay otherwise we immediately go for uh, like uh, we immediately purchase new medication next is the controversial advertisement influence this is again uh, one of the reason by which like uh, the medications are adhered at home now this is the health system cause repeat treatment prescribing i think everyone is uh, like uh, agree with this particular point because like if we are taking any uh, medication and uh, like over supply of uh, this uh, medication can result in the accumulation actually this happens because like uh, when a prescriber unknowingly write new prescription uh, what like hota uh, kya like uh, when we are visiting to any uh, physician then physician prescribes uh, new prescriptions to their patient without making sure or being unable to make sure whether the patient already has these medications so this lead to the accumulation again next is inappropriate repeated dispensing like pharmacist have their own share of medication wastage when they repeat the dispersal of medication and like what happened in this particular case inappropriate dispensing may lead to like sometime it is unintentional actually it is not always intentional it is unintentional also and because like uh, overdosing also sometime uh, overdosing uh, themselves leading to the unnecessary side effects then the treatment change treatment change like i have discussed this is uh, the most important point because uh we are uh, sometime we are not satisfied with our prescriber because he is uh, giving the treatment to us but uh, unfortunately uh, it will uh, not uh, like 100% uh, like uh, for the patient then what we did uh, what we did we usually uh, follow the instructions even with they change their medications to the uh, like uh, we are visiting any physician and immediately like uh, uh, paracetamol is not working for us kindly change it so uh, immediately like doctor will write uh, some other uh, salt uh, he may write ibuprofen he may write diclofenac he may write something else so already paracetamol is at home because it is not working for you maybe like uh, of the reasons uh, like uh, what we can say uh, resistance uh, developed uh, because of the paracetamol 
then immediately it, we may switch to another treatment chain this may lead to the accumulation again then is a long prescription duration this is uh, because uh, like uh, sometime uh, like if a prescription is having a refilling of 6 to 7 days then uh, we can assume there is less shortage or less accumulation of medication but if it is having a long duration like a period of you have to come after 30 days you have to come after 45 days then this may lead to the accumulation always now how unwanted medications are disposed this is uh, one of the most important thing they are a proper disposal mechanism actually but unfortunately uh, like uh, if i talk about india there is no former rules although uh, the pollution control board is uh, taking utmost uh, prior on uh, taking this step on utmost priority uh, due to this covid situation otherwise like uh, if we can check the acum uh, because i have some data uh, which is uh, from delhi only the accumulation is uh, like uh, production is 70 ton approximately and the treatment is only 11 ton the reason is the treatment cost also like uh, we are having some incinerator at our uh, like uh, premises like some of the industries then uh, there is treatment cost also involved for uh, uh, like a proper treatment and uh, if i talk about one ton of a waste then it will take around 10000 rupees 10 to uh, 15000 rupees for the treatment and uh, there is 70 ton so you can imagine like uh, for the treatment of waste how much uh, a person is investing actually and uh, for the like in the uh, early uh, like uh, starting of the slide i have discussed one thing uh, which is uh, like uh, if i talk about pharmaceutical industry pharmaceutical industry is taking uh, like uh, very much uh, at most precautions uh, to dispose of the things but uh, if we have to purchase a medicine then we have to visit a, a medical store uh, for the purchase because no one is allowed to even uh, keep their medication uh, in a general store but uh, like if we have to return then there is no formal procedure so uh, like if uh, there are uh, like uh, there are total 79 persons in the presentation if uh, some of uh, like uh, from you like is uh, having uh, that type of contacts with the health authorities then uh, i think uh, uh, please uh, like uh, start one day back option like medicine take back option and uh, people are ready actually but they don't know because they are unaware so that type of things uh, if like implemented in india then there can be a big change and here you see improper disposal improper disposal like uh, in the sink toilets like or given to a friend and like in india the public and the pharmacist dispose of their unwanted medication in sink or in the garbage this raised the alarm for the need of quick action and here you see the disposal of unwanted medications in commonly known place such as sink toilets as stated like there is a return back program should be introduced like which i have discussed after discussing with the pharmacist they reported some of the pharmacists have reported that they are not ready for the return of unwanted medications and they are concerned about what to do with these items in the absence of relevant laws so the problem is that like a pharmacist is not ready to accept the sold medicine because uh, like ek bar paisa aa gaya to like uh, we don't think ki, uh, we have to return that amount so you can start like if a common like if we aware the public na then public may donate that particular medication also because it is of no use for that particular patient but unfortunately there is no separate category like uh, even like if we install some boxes in the uh, like uh, premises of a retail shop like unused and one second boxes for the expired medication then patient may donate their medication also as per uh, their convenience like if it is unused then he can drop uh, their medicine in the un uh, unused box if it is expired then to the expired box so the question is how to dispose of unused and expired medications which we have like uh, listening from the starting uh, first one is the medicine take back option 
Second is the disposal in the household trash and flushing certainly potentially dangerous medicine in the toilet. Now, here you see the medicine take back option. Uh, there are few regulatory agencies actually. Uh, first one is EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. Environmental Protection Agency US as well as India. They are taking uh, some preventive measures for the same. And uh, uh, like yesterday, I have visited the uh, website of uh, uh, State Pollution Control Board, uh, which is of uh, like Chandigarh. And in this, I have seen uh, because of this COVID uh, situation, uh, they have one app also. Like if I talk about India, uh, COVID-19 uh, BWM, Biomedical Waste Management. Like if you check the Play Store, then you will find that particular app. So in this app, they have to share their data. And uh, like uh, there are uh, some uh, attachments available in the uh, that particular website in which I have seen the entry of uh, the biomedical waste, like which was not there earlier, like when I talk about 2019 or 18. But this COVID has given a uh, basically alarming situation. So everyone is now bothered, like uh, we have to take care of uh, this particular thing. And medicine take back options are the preferred way to safely dispose of most type of unneeded medication because common people or a layman public don't know like what is the procedure. And even as a pharmacist, we don't know. Uh, like uh, we have uh, discussed, uh, we have like uh, studied D form, B form as well as M form. And like now there is a one chapter in uh, B form six semester uh, quality assur in quality assurance subject. Uh, complaints, recalls, and waste uh, disposal. And there is one chapter only. So by that particular chapter, we have to take care of all the things which is too much dangerous. So uh, here you see the second point. There are generally two kinds of take back options. First is the periodic event. Second is the permanent collection site. Now the periodic event, kya hote hai? It should be noted, however, that a small number of medicine have specific direction to immediately flush them down the toilet when they are no longer needed and a take back option is not easily available. And there are some local law enforcement agencies like if I talk about municipal corporation office, so they can also sponsor medicine take back events in your community also. So we can discuss with the local administration, the MLA, or we can see the Parshad or uh, the Sarpanch of uh, the village or the community. We can ask them, please help us. Consumer can also contact their local waste management authorities for the same. Now, this is about the periodic event. Now, the permanent collection site. I have discussed about one agency, which is drug enforcement agencies, and another is like drug enforcement administration. Like uh, what we can see, another option for the consumers and the long-term care facilities to dispose of unneeded medications is to transfer these medications to the DEA, registered collectors, which is actually the registered collector. They can safely and securely collect and dispose all the medications. In your community, authorized permanent collection site may be retail pharmacy, hospital, or clinical pharmacy or which is suggested by your uh, local uh, enforcement agency. And like if we introduce this concept, not drop box, and if company will take a side by side initiative, if it is supported by the government too, then together we can make our difference. Because like there is no option, like uh, in the last year, I have discussed the same thing. Uh, like if in the medical store, there will be an option of drop box of unused and expired medication because like uh, like if someone is handling their uh, uh, medical store you must have seen one thing uh, like uh, there is a take back option for a pharmacist like if medicine is expired then uh, they will usually uh, like uh, take back your uh, medication but if it is of the patient then first uh, your retail pharmacist will refuse. Second, if will if he or she will take uh, your medication, then uh, I don't think he will uh, like uh, send that particular medications to the pharmaceutical industry because of the higher cost which is involved uh, during the treatment. So if 
government will take an initiative under this uh, like some kind of a subsidy is given to uh, pharmaceutical industry then definitely they can think about uh, this uh, preventive measure also now uh, this is a simple procedure how you can uh, deal with uh, this unused or expired medication uh, you have to mix the medicine uh, do not crush tablets or capsules with an unpalatable substance such as dirt cat litter or coffee grounds place the mixtures in a container such as sealed bag throw the container in your household trash delete all the personal information this is uh, the like uh, basically suggestion which is uh, given by the federal drug administration now this is the impact you know like uh, these types of medications uh, may uh, raise questions about the environment also and uh, about the contamination of the surface and the drinking water supply too and fda believes that the non risk of harm including death to the human from the accidental exposure to certain medications especially potent opioid medicines uh, i like uh, i have like uh, some uh, basically uh, questions uh, for you also uh, which i will discuss later now but uh, i want to ask like if uh, i will ask in the end only uh, i will complete uh, my presentation first next is impact on environmental and aquatic life pharmaceutical and personal care products can enter the water supply via sink toilets and the trash so many people dispose of humans and the pet medication either by flushing them down the toilet or throwing them in the trash so this may lead to the problem now the main part i will discuss which is the method disposal of pharmaceutical waste how we will dispose the things several methods of disposal may be used in the pharmaceutical management discussed by fda first one is incineration which is known as thermal treatment like this is one of the best method actually and in this particular method the solid organic waste materials are incinerated or burnt and like hoga kya it will convert into a gaseous product and leaving behind a solid residue in the form of ash this is one of the most effective method and it can be used for disposal of solid liquid as well as gaseous waste while there are a mixed opinion because of the challenges of the gases because the uh, like the emission of the gas may pollute the environment also and but it is one of the best way to dispose hazardous waste such as biomedical waste but these days like uh, incinerator of higher qualities are also available the type of the gas like uh, emitted from the incinerator is basically accumulated by filters there are some carbon filters as well as uh, some uh, hapa filters are also there which will absorb the harmful basically uh, the radi harmful uh, bacteria which actually emit from that harmful gases and it will absorb all the things and uh, second is second concern about incinerator is their uh, basically cost running cost uh, because uh, they run on the electricity so uh, we uh, like uh, i have basically um, uh, granted a patent for the same uh, about the incineration i have developed uh, basically a protocol of uh, iot based incinerator in which we have implemented we have initiated the solar panel uh, to operate this incinerator second is the chemical disinfection method this method like uh, commonly used in the hospitals this method involves treating waste materials with some chemicals that will inactivate the chemical or the biological material which is present in the liquid waste the effectiveness of the process depends on the type of the chemical and the strength of the chemical which we are using because the type of the chemical the strength of the chemical and the nature of the contact time between the chemical as well as the waste so this is again like one of the widely used method next is the microwaving you know microwave is all about radiations and radiations can destroy the infectious materials which is present in the biomedical waste it is uh, like uh, very much advantageous in comparison to other one because of the of the 
low consumption of electricity and no steam is needed like uh, if i compare with the autoclave then there is uh, involvement of the steam but it is uh, not very much suitable for the pharmaceutical waste but the biomedical waste uh, we can like uh, but for the for that particular thing for microwaving the thing we have to first shred shredded uh, we have to shred the waste prior to the microwaving to allow the radiations because we have to increase the surface area like there will be a large surface area then there will be more exposure uh, to that particular waste then we can think like uh, this will be in contact with that particular radiation as i have discussed about the steam then the steam is autoclaving only and it works like everyone knows moist heat sterilization here what we we will do like we have to uh, like pass a saturated steam through the waste for a definite period of a time and a duration and like uh, you have to set a temperature which is sufficient to destroy the growth of the pathogens and this is again most widely used method for the biomedical waste disposal and also waste which is generated during the microbiological testing lab and the waste which is produced by the autoclaving it must be disposed of by landfilling because uh this is uh, like uh, if we are following this procedure now because this is also a major concern which i have discussed in the earlier slide like after disposing what you are doing are you doing the land filling or not this is a uh, again a major concern we cannot throw that type of waste in an open next is secure land filling because like i has as i have discussed land filling in the autoclaving then we have to go for a secure land filling option and the waste are disposed by burying in a landfill that has been designed to contain the hazardous waste because like you know we have to properly design a method or a land in which like uh, there are some problems with the landfilling because like uh, if there are some liquid which is to be incorporated inside that particular land then it may leach into the ground water and which may attract some kind of worms and other some problems so uh, we have to take care like uh, we have to basically uh, understand the mechanism like uh, how uh, like we have to implant a gas extraction system uh, to remove the carbon dioxide and the methane that may produced by the anaerobic breakdown of the waste also because you know like uh, there are uh, various types of bacteria anaerobic as well as aerobic bacteria next is the deep deep burial method this is a uh, like a quite good method because in this we have to uh, basically uh, the waste we have to bury it in a dip uh, in a in a basically deep pits and uh, which is of approximately 2 uh, meter uh, having the depth of 2 meter and uh, in this like we have to think uh, like uh, we have to take care uh, in those areas where the soil is impermeable because uh, like uh, and what how we have to do we have to take care like we have to fill the half pit which is covered with a biomedical waste followed by uh, the lime we have to incorporate lime then like uh, we have to introduce lime over it a layer of a lime which will actually uh, like uh, uh, what we can say neutralize the Uh, a reaction between the pharmaceutical waste reaction of the pharmaceutical waste and the final layer of the pit is made up of soil to cover the waste such burial should be done only in the areas that are not prone to the flooding because like uh, if there will be flood then again a big challenge will be there now the waste encapsulation waste encapsulation immobilization technique in this particular part what we have to do we have to uh, take a drum uh, we have to clean the drum we have to fill the drum of uh, like uh, with 75% of their capacity the drum may be of uh, steel or a plastic and uh, the remaining space like 75% we have filled with the waste the remaining space is filled with either cement or lime cement mix or some plastic form then this drum is sealed and placed at the bottom of a landfill and fresh solid waste we like if we want to cover then we can cover it with the fresh solid waste 
Next is the waste immobilization, which is inertiation method. What we are basically, uh, what is uh, like given in this particular method, this involves the grinding of pharmaceutical product. Uh, this you can do at your home also. You have to grind your pharmaceutical products after removing from the packing. Then the ground product is mixed with the cement. You have to purchase the cement. You have to purchase lime from the market. You uh, like what you can do, uh, make a layer of a cement and a lime. Then all the ingredients, uh, let him, let him be dry. All the like, uh, which you have prepared, uh, you, you can basically take a, uh, what we can say, um, uh, basically a chamber in which uh, you can, uh, you can, you can take a plate, simple, a simple plate. You can, uh, uh keep. And after, uh, after this, uh, you have to uh, spread cement, uh, and as well as lime, then the grinded medicine, you have to uh, basically spread over that particular layer. Again, you have to basically, you have to make a sandwich, uh, like one layer at the bottom of the cement, as well as uh, this uh, lime, then a layer of a uh, grounded medicine, uh, this grinded medication after this, uh, again, a layer of a cement and your uh, lime. So this will, uh, like cement will, uh, like basically, you know, like it will fix, fix down. And uh, after formation of a paste, it will dry after a period of a time. Then this paste is transported to landfill and poured into the normal waste where it's set as a solid mass. So you can prepare brick also for the same. Like uh, if uh, you can work by this method, because uh, like we don't have that particular amount of a waste at our home. Uh, usually um, uh, like uh, uh, if we can see, uh, you, we will find uh, approximately uh, 40 to 50 tablets uh, along with a syrup bottle and a few of them are like a bandage, etc. and etc. So if there are pharmaceutical waste, then we can go ahead with this method. This is one of the cheapest method. And uh, you know about the property of a cement. Next is the sewer treatment. Liquid drug product can be largely diluted by mixing with water and flush down the sewer very slowly in small quantities. Small quantities of very diluted medicines may be flushed down fast flowing water bodies too. So these are some methods by which we can uh, do the uh, disposal. But like uh, there is one more uh, method which is actually left, I will uh, tell you, which is the effluent treatment of pharmaceutical waste. Because uh, the waste, which is uh, having uh, like uh, there are some pharmaceutical ingredients, there are some excipients, there are some solvents, there are some chemicals, there are some oils, there are some grease, then it must be therefore treated in a right way to remove the toxic materials because it may lead to pollution again and the aquatic life also. It may disturb the aquatic life also. So what we have to basically uh, do with the effluent treatment plan, like earlier, uh, like uh, we have to take care of uh, the water, which is uh, running out from your laboratory. You can uh, like implant some filter, which will uh, like remove the particulate matter and the floating solids. Like you will collect only the waste water in the collection tank. Then you can aerate basically uh, you have to neutralize that particular tank you how you can utilize you have to add some uh, basically uh, some agents such as lime or the aluminum bisulfite it will neutralize the things it will keep your keep the ph 6 to 7 then uh, you have to like add some flocculating agent into it like uh, potassium like everyone knows about the potassium it is a very good um, flocculating agent or uh, may, keep, uh, may uh, give rise to the formation of coagulation. Then this coagulated material in the form of sludge, it will settle down at the bottom. And then effluent is sent to the septic tank also. Now, addition of nutrient to the septic tank, that will promote the growth of the bacteria because that will bring the biological degradation of organic material as well. And the sludge produced is again separated and effluent is sent to the activated carbon. Like in the industry, there is uh, there, are, there are big plants actually, but 
like in our institution like many of us from uh, like are from some colleges or some from schools we can initiate this process uh, like uh, starting from our school only then like uh, activated carbon filter is there it will remove any coloring material then the clear treated waste water is obtained may be used for the irrigation of the plants on the premises also like we are using stp you know uh, like similarly we can go ahead for the effluent treatment plant also so uh, like what to do with the unused medication i have discussed like uh, i will uh, definitely tell you what we can do we can request actually uh, donating to the nearby health camp or give your medicine medicines to retail pharmacist or the community pharmacist so that they can provide the medicines to the needy person or there is one more option like uh, i think uh, some of the faculty members are also there in the uh, participant list uh, what we can do we can basically ask the students we can prepare a team of the students like uh, there are uh, maybe like 10 to 15 active students in the list in the uh, in the class then ask them to go and visit each and every class request them for a novel course definitely they will bring some medicines from there like only unused medications you have to ask for unused medications you are a pharmacist you are expert then what you can do you can segregate the medicines like uh, cold uh, different tablets uh, nsaids antihypertensive all the categories you have to separate out after separation then like with the help or with the consultation of some doctor then you can organize or with the help of rotary club or then you can organize one health camp in which you can distribute that particular medication this is a novel course now what to do with the expired medications like this idea we have implemented at our campus we have organized one competition like i have heard about the bio, uh, like the best out of waste but we have initiated uh, this thing like, like let the student try some different thing so we have uh, like started best out of pharmaceutical waste and biomedical waste competition and like this is one of the example like uh, which i have shared here this is a pharma tree pharma scope tree like this is uh, like uh, of not only of the pharmaceutical waste they have used some wire also uh, but like uh, the hanging part is of like tablet capsule wrapper of a tablet here you can see the water one so here they have written each and everything scope of the pharmacy subjects of the pharmacy and here you see the second one this is the syrup bottles which is hanging actually so they have prepared a very good design of the same and we have organized this competition in the campus and others institutions like uh, nearby like uh, they are inspired from this thing and they have also started this kind of a thing we now require like uh, some innovative and the creative approaches uh, to get rid of these types of waste so uh, this will uh, definitely help uh, not only us this will help the environment too uh, like uh, this i have discussed reducing reusing and recycling of valuable waste material can result in the development of the fantastic and usable product we have to reduce we have to reuse we have to recycle but in the uh, like starting i have discussed there is uh, one uh, company which is recycling the product and they are preparing something which is hazardous for the health we don't have to uh, like go for that particular option think positive think in a manner like students can do like miracle uh, like if, so you can give a chance to the student then you will see you will uh, find n number of things uh, like n number of ideas from the students for the same like uh, this we have uh, incinerator uh, uh, for the disposal of sanitary pads and masks this we have uh, like uh, installed at our uh, university campus and there are some clippings uh, like from the newspapers only what happens to the excreted drug you flush them down it will may lead to the problem this is about the news which i have discussed biomedical waste being recycled in the national capital which is in the narela west delhi and uh, like uh, you can see here biomedical waste needs to be handled carefully and disposed of after being dispatched from the hospitals too 
by recycling biomedical waste these industries are playing with the lives of the people in the country and what they are like uh, what kind of a product are there syringes needles medicines bottle small bottles used for collection collecting blood samples so they have used that kind of things so this is like highly dangerous and the recycled plastic biomedical waste are further processed in the industry i have told you like what they have prepared disposable plates glasses ice cream cups toys and many such product of daily use they are like illegal it's life threatening too and it is not environmental friendly also so this is about uh, the kalpana chawla medical college uh, dumping of the biomedical waste in the open this is like everything about the covid waste and like there are some reports uh, which reveals like uh, there are few hospitals which is having uh, facilities also but they are not operating it because of the n number of reasons uh, reason may be like the cost also here you see uh, like the current status of the biomedical waste management in delhi 10.7 tons per day biomedical waste is treated in delhi however generation is 70 ton uh, like if uh, if you have you got a chance to visit delhi na then please visit azadpur near area then you will see a uh, like uh, uh, himalaya parvat in delhi also himalaya parvat of waste only so government hospitals are also reported to be turning a blind eye to the hazards of biomedical waste by either casually dumping the untreated waste this is despite the fact they have been expensive incinerator which i have told you because the cost is too much second like firstly we have to purchase a incinerator then we have to take a uh, like uh, expert also so everything is with the uh, money only so government should give some subsidy like uh, to the pharmaceutical industry then they can definitely think of this particular uh, noble cause so this is uh, all about uh, today's uh, presentation thank you so much sir thank you now like uh, if uh, you have any question uh, um, sir main slide ko band kar deta hu taki uh, please band kar dijiye sir yes. band kar dijiye then yes. i can discuss because, absolutely absolutely yeah. absolutely आप वीडियो भी ऑन कर सकते हैं आप करते हैं परफेक्ट सो थैंक यू सो मच सर सच ए एक्सलेंट एंड आई ओपनिंग सेशन बाय डॉक्टर तरुण पर्सनली योर प्रेजेंटेशन हैज गिवन मी मोर आइडियाज एंड थॉट्स ऑन मैनेजिंग फार्मास्यूटिकल वेस्ट सो थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर इनलाइटनिंग एंड हेल्पिंग अस नो मच मोर अबाउट दिस यू नो बर्निंग टॉपिक विच एवरी सिंगल फार्मेसी प्रोफेशनल प्रेजेंट हियर एंड who is even you who will be watching this later on must be aware of okay so participants you know if you have listened this thoroughly let us know how do you feel about this the condition is you have to give the feedback in maximum three words use the chat box let's see what you think three words you have to say what you feel about this presentation please give, use the chat box and give your suggestions also yeah suggestion will take up in the q and a session but now okay. i just only the feedback three words fastest finger first i'll keep on reading the names of the participants who start typing in very informative session priya amazing topic anjali pratiksha it's very awesome three words eye opening excellent informative excellent ramesh i'm just reading the chats and i have request to each and every one uh, i will uh, share my uh, slides to uh, manoj sir and manoj sir will share in the group also so if you need any kind of assistance from me uh, to present that particular thing in your institution or in your locality then i am ready i am available so uh, but you have to think like uh, because uh, alone we can't do anything but alone like we if we are together na then we can make a change absolutely alone we cannot do so here uh, you know in uh, uh, in tum uh, bangalore and in mysore uh, one of my close friend he has started a concept called mets bin 
so mm-hmm. what he has uh, done is he has kept this uh, you know medicine bins uh, or medical bins uh, in prominent areas specifically colleges schools and other places and uh, you know they have started collecting unused and unexpired medicines and they have started donating to the needy people okay and this this program is again supported by government of india uh, to a large extent and next session uh, you know together with dr tarun i'll bring him on the stage and uh, next week probably uh, in the first week of february okay and then we'll talk about more as to how our pharmacy professionals can start a entrepreneurial journey in managing pharmaceutical waste huge opportunity from waste management and very less investment you can start your own uh, entrepreneurship journey and you can earn money you know that you could not you cannot imagine okay so uh, you know this is something that i wanted to tell all of you you know some of some uh, participants left the session so they not they not know it but please pass on this information and we'll have this session together three of us will will be having it in the february first week probably i'll check with uh, another friend of mine who is doing this initiative and we'll brainstorm more on how we can effectively utilize our skills as pharmacy professionals and uh, you know uh, manage this waste at the same time earn money okay yes. so this is this is very important like every college has started this entrepreneurship cell and you know uh, people are struggling with ideas to get you know how to start but now this could be one starting point for you know just imagine every city has started this one uh, particular cell uh, with the pharmaceutical or biomedical waste management uh, we could l- l- deal with tons of pharmaceutical waste and tons of money together right so um, this is like a, a environment friendly as well as pocket friendly also absolutely yes absolutely like uh, uh, i have seen uh, like uh, one uh, basically program on the sony channel uh shark tank so yeah, shark like tank. if uh, some of us uh, like uh, will start this particular thing now then uh, we can ask for the investment also there are like uh, various shark tanks available for the investment but they don't they just want to know like uh, what is your uh, motive behind that particular exactly. thing or you are doing something uh, for what you are doing for the society or what you are what you have did so far yes so, absolutely so thank you so much participants and you see the chat box it's you know bubbling with the uh, uh, feedback on the session and everybody is saying excellent session very nice topic and we have taken this up and all of that and they are congratulating dr tarun for taking this initiative for you know making all of us aware about managing pharmaceutical waste which is uh, you know burning topic so now you know to interact more with the participants we have a rule the rule is you have to raise your virtual hand Yes. Uh, then we'll give you the unmuting right then you'll ask the question directly with dr tarun because see dr tarun has spent so much of time speaking and now we would definitely love to see you and interact with you and preferably if you like please switch on the video so that we'll interact live if you don't like to switch on the video that's fine you can still unmute and talk if you still do not want to unmute but still ask the question you can still put on the chat box so i'll read the question for you so all the options are open and it is perfectly a, a you know platform for interaction so don't hesitate because one question that you are asking might change the life of somebody else also somebody else might have this question but he or she may not be interested to ask so please that ask that question even if it is a silly question don't worry just keep asking interaction is something that we all love and you know despite being virtual from uh, you know connecting from so many cities okay so you know let's let's do this okay so from which cities you are uh, tuning in just type the name of the city in the chat box let's see how many participants and from where cities which cities we are uh, having i'll read out the name jalgaon okay latur faridabad nagpur jalgaon latur palwal coimbatore wow see this okay i am just waiting some more some more. bangalore excellent bareilly latur so many people from so many different hasu hosur gaziabad pune see this you are tuning in from so many cities belgaum okay so just imagine the change that we are trying to bring in here okay with our knowledge just imagine the kind of you know parola nanded kambi okay latur again so so many places tamil nadu kodlore okay latur again 
so so many places right so just imagine if you have a little definitely you are much better uh, with respect to knowledge from other people now you have at least 1% uh, more knowledge than others about pharmaceutical waste management that is what we are expecting sonipat thank you thank you parola divyani from uh, parola thank you so just imagine we are having so many people from so many different places now raise your virtual hand if you want to ask a question from dr tarun and we'd love to interact with you and see how we can help each other and try to uh, you know make this uh, mainstream uh, session dr tarun you wanted to say something ah uh, yes sir uh, because i have seen uh, there are so many participants from latour so i request uh, i if they are like from the same institution uh, then uh, definitely i want to uh, basically uh, do the uh, this uh, particular session in latur only perfect we'll do that okay sir thank you so uh, uh, kavita madam you have raised your hand i'm just giving you the option to unmute please go on you can unmute and talk yes sir thank you sir thank you madam uh, uh, very good afternoon sir i want no, to ask sir. one question if there is any training required for my management if we if we plan for uh, such a entrepreneurship if any training is required for that uh, ma'am as far as training is concerned uh, like uh, uh, earlier like uh, two years back uh, what we have observed there are no former rules actually regarding the same there is no regulatory agency so okay. if there will be no regulatory agency then we can't uh, like assure this thing ki there will be a training also okay. and uh, there is like uh, who is taking care of that particular thing that is only the pollution control board yeah and the pollution control board is taking care of that particular thing and uh, mm-hmm. what we have uh, basically seen there must be a internal process which is like uh, for that particular people who have joined their organization but as a ngo or what we can say as a like a volunteer like if we seek uh, some kind of a help from them then they definitely like think like uh, we can go ahead with that particular option also because this is our awareness wing okay so to add to dr tarun's uh, you know uh, uh, information and uh, kavita madam there are uh, you know farmers uh, uh, pollution control boards in every state in every district okay so we can connect with either the central pollution control board or the state pollution control board and we also have in place uh, something called as the biomedical waste guidelines uh, you know last year it was released so there are a lot of information given in uh, both the uh, guidelines and also uh, from the state pollution control boards now in bangalore specifically there are couple of companies who are specifically into pharmaceutical waste management and uh, you know fortunately i am part of one of the companies so and they are doing great job with respect to managing the pharmaceutical waste and there are many com- you know opportunities for pharmacy graduates and masters who want to start something similar in their uh, location so if anybody has this you know thought that okay i don't have funds but i want to something do something for the society at the same time i want to earn money then please do connect with dr tarun or myself and we'll definitely try to help you out and guide you and dr tarun will also help you in getting the basic training and awareness that he has been doing for so many years and you know i'm one of the lucky persons to be part of uh, you know this association with him and this is the second session i'm you know luckily doing with him so definitely this knowledge is the key today and unless we have this knowledge uh, we cannot def- do anything much right so please uh, thank you for asking dr K- um, kavita and uh, dr tarun for answering that this was just my addition in case any one of you want to ask more questions please don't hesitate this is the time do uh, you know raise your virtual hand and then we'll ask the question so let's wait for few seconds i'm just seeing the chat if somebody has asked anything so no question so far so looks like uh, <laughs> okay so anyone who wants to que- ask question then please do ask or else you know i'll uh, you know ask on your behalf uh, a general question so dr tarun uh, you know before anybody asks so one major question is you know uh, everybody in in some you know we use medicines on a daily basis whether you know for the general usage or for a disease we keep using now there are a lot of uh, situations which happen one is you know for example the doctor might have given too many um, uh, medications in one time and the patient gets cured very fast uh, there is another condition wherein the medicine get expired so now this is a situation so one is unused and one is expired 
now unused is uh, something that really we don't care we keep it for lifelong uh, and expect that you know after some time if the same problem happens we'll take the medication so this is this goes into self medication which is not right and expired as usual we just throw in the dustbin or throw outside our house so this is what we have been doing so as a general uh, layman if we have to tell that okay what is it that you should do what do you think we should suggest them as a general layman so for let's not talk about the pharmacy as a profession here if you know each of us now we have so many people in the you know session today if they we have to educate at least five families around our house to start with what is the basic advice that should we should give uh, sir my basic advice is like uh, uh... if we are having a requirement of uh, three tablets then why we are purchasing 10 tablets now there are two reasons for this one is the pharmacy professionals you know the retail pharmacists or so called chemists and druggists uh, they sometimes try to push this uh, medicine so as a person as a layman and the person may not be knowing that uh, the antibiotic is only for 3 days or 5 days they might uh, give 15 tablets and he might purchase but uh, you know he might uh, get relief in say three doses or four doses and after that they stop so there is a awareness problem here for the general patients they don't know that you know so much so dosage of medicine has to be taken number one number two uh, what has to be done with the medication right so this is again a problem so as a general uh, you know pharmacist who are just graduating or who are still studying we can create little bit of awareness at least in our area right so let's not try to change the world let's try to change our uh, area first you know yes. our home our uh, close by neighbors who are there yes uh, yeah. like uh, our locality only like if we oh, are sure. uh, residing in our uh, like uh, apartment then uh, we can uh, discuss with the discuss this particular thing with the rwa then uh, we can uh, request them like if uh, i have seen like in delhi only uh there is one organization which is known as uh, i think most of us have heard about this medicine baba trust okay. uh, medicine baba trust is doing the same thing uh, but uh, like uh, the concept is different actually okay. uh, what they are doing like initially uh, mr omkar nath who is basically the founder of uh, medicine baba trust uh, he is uh, basically uh, earlier he was working with the kalash hospital uh, greater noida so after retirement from uh, this kalash hospital uh, he has uh, like uh, he, he has the idea like earlier also but uh, due to the shortage of time uh, like uh, he ha- he was not able to uh, do the task uh, what he did like he start begging uh, from uh, like uh, uh, like home to home he went to like uh, nearby uh, area and he uh, like uh, start begging लाइक आई नीड सम मेडिसिन प्लीज मुझे मेडिसिन दे दो आपके किसी काम की नहीं है यू कैन सी सम पिक्चर्स ऑन यूट्यूब ऑल्सो लाइक इफ यू फाइंड मेडिसिन बाबा ना देन यू विल फाइंड लाइक ही इज वेरी लाइक इंटरेस्टिंग पर्सन सो ही हैज लाइक स्टार्टेड दिस मिशन देन ही वॉज ज्वाइंड बाई द को फाउंडर विच इज मिस्टर सचिन गांधी मिस्टर सचिन गांधी लाइक वॉज सम काइंड ऑफ अ टेक्निकल एक्सपर्ट एक्चुअली so what he did like uh, he has given uh, him a platform hmm. now like uh, what he is doing uh, he earlier he was doing uh, the bagging from like one home to another like he was limited to a particular location only then he has created a website then he has floated uh, like n number of uh, what we can say creatives on the social media then it was like uh, now what is the condition is Uh, like they people have basically put their boxes in the rwa in the different different departments and there is a separate van who actually like collect all the med- unused and the expired medicines from that particular locality and they have pharmacist at their premises they separately segregate all the medicines and they have a counter like a medical store in their home and what they did like they Uh, offer the medicines to the slum areas or to that particular person who is actually needy but for this they required prescription mm-hmm. like which is actually given by the doctor second is like uh, by profession uh, he is uh, like uh, technician lab technician mr omkar nath and uh, like now the prop like uh, they usually uh, starting uh, getting funds from the industry also from the pharmaceutical industry also what kind of a funds 
like funds in the form of a tablet only nearby expire medicines okay. like which is near to the expiry because they know like uska kuch nahi hone wala unse so they donate actually donate karke unhone kya kiya unki problem ko bada diya excellent problem kyon badai kyunki unko wahan pe treat karna padta hai usko wahan pe jo treatment cost thi wo kon bear karega wahan pe wo medicine baba bear karenge अब वहां पे चैलेंज स्टार्ट हुआ ये जो आइडिया इनकलकेट हुआ दैट इज द इनिशियल सीडिंग्स फ्रॉम मिस्टर सचिन गांधी ओनली कि लाइक वी आर नॉट लाइक फॉर अर्निंग समथिंग वी आर हेयर टू बेसिकली लाइक गिविंग सम समथिंग टू द पीपल ओनली बट फॉर दिस वी हैव टू बियर द कोर्स फ्रॉम ओनली लाइक आर पॉकेट ओनली सो दे हैव स्टार्टेड फंड रेजिंग फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग so uh, now uh, like uh, there is one agency which is uh, like named sms uh, like so they have given uh, them the assignment like uh, you have to treat all our medical waste uh, with the help of uh, incinerator or uh, like uh, the devices which is available in their premises now like uh, they did for three times and the costing was approximately 50000 above so uh, like uh, now uh, what the situation is they are choosy now they like ask people like please don't send us near by expiry medicine first of all if you are sending don't send in bulk because we don't have the capacity to distribute so much amount of medicines second they are getting funds for the treatment also because nowadays they are getting uh, funds uh, for uh, this medication from outside india also oh. like more than uh, 20 to 25 countries are donating in the this uh, particular uh, medicine baba trust so uh, earlier the stage was bit difficult for them but nowadays uh, like uh, they are bit relaxed they can like uh, bear that particular cost also so uh, mr sachin gandhi uh, like uh, met me in a conference and uh, uh, he just discussed me this particular idea sir what to do with unused medicines simple answer tha sir fake dete hain aur kuch nahi karte तो सर फेंकते हैं तो एनवायरनमेंट को भी तो नुकसान पहुंचाएगा ना बिल्कुल तो वहां से स्टार्ट हुई सर ये जर्नी और अब उनके पास फंड्स हैं कोई दिक्कत की बात नहीं है हम कर रहे हैं लेकिन आइडिया ये है कि हम वो फंड्स अननेसेसरी वेस्ट ना करें करेक्ट तो ये प्रोसेस सर थी जो इसकी उसमें थी मैं मतलब हमारा जो नेक्स्ट सेशन रहेगा मैं चाहूंगा कि मैं अपना जो मेडिसिन बाबा है और जो सचिन गांधी जी उनको भी ज्वाइन कराऊ ताकि जितने भी हमारे व्यूअर्स रहेंगे वो व्यूज जब जानेंगे क्योंकि आई एम जस्ट अ प्रेजेंटर ओनली सिंपल सी बात बोलूंगा मुझे जो आइडिया दिया वो उन्होंने ही दिया बट मैंने वर्क किया क्योंकि मैं थोड़ा सा इसमें टेक्निकल था तो दे आर नॉट टेक्निकल एक्सपर्ट फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट्स वाई तो उन्होंने एक इसकी डॉक्यूमेंट्री भी बनाई पूरी अगर आप यूट्यूब पे चेक करेंगे आपको डॉक्यूमेंट्री भी मिलेगी जिसमें अलग अलग एम्स के डॉक्टर हैं इवन लाइक सम आर फ्रॉम लाइक ड्रग कंट्रोलिंग अथॉरिटी आल्सो दे हैव गिवन देयर व्यूज रिगार्डिंग द सेम एंड लाइक इट इज पॉपुलर इन नॉर्थ इंडिया लाइक दीज डेज बिकॉज लाइक लाइक व्हाट वी कैन लाइक इनिशियली यू हैव आल्सो पॉइंट आउट लाइक फोकस्ड ऑन वन पॉइंट अवेयरनेस सो दिस अवेयरनेस इज द की बाय व्हिच वी कैन एजुकेट ऑल द पीपल absolutely so he has uh, given me a hint he has actually given me an idea to like go ahead and you can uh, like achieve n number of things like initially when we are like uh, when i have prepared this slide i told him sir there is no government rule what to do so he said me don't worry sir uh, together we will fight and we will do something absolutely i absolutely. think miss anubrati has raised her hand okay i can't see anyways so there will be questions uh, you know in the chat box i'll take one by one oh, so one question is from sai swarup from bangalore mm-hmm. he says uh, hazardous waste can also catch fire right so if we if, if we cannot go for incineration that time should we go for deep burning or something else yes uh, like i have suggested a few methods Uh, like uh, you can choose uh, any of the method but like uh, uh, what is the uh, best appropriate method like if there is hazardous waste which is like uh, uh, which can uh, catch fire then you can go for alternative option also that depends like uh, you should uh, like for biomedical waste initially you can treat with the chemicals also 
Yes. Like uh, you can neutralize all the things, then you can go for this burial method. Yeah, that is, uh, that is yes. uh, one of the good thing. Yes, burial burial can be done after yes. you know making the uh, contents inert by yes. treating them with uh, you know complementary chemicals. Yes, sir. So that they become inert with the, so that the you know dam damage to the environment can be prevented. There are a lot of things that can be done. Like for example, if in Bangalore, if I have to tell you the example, uh, this e-commerce portals, you know, such as Amazon and Flipkart, they sell this uh, nutraceuticals, yeah. right? And nutraceuticals, uh, you know, almost, uh, you know, last when I was interacting, you know, about one and a half years back, I came to know that about one to two tons of uh, nutraceutical is expired every month. Yeah. Okay, just imagine that quantity, one to two tons. Okay. So what they did is, you know, there is a research organization here in Bangalore. So they wanted to experiment and try if something can be done. So what they did, they took this uh, nutraceutical expired medicines and they tried in putting that into a organic farming field. Okay. And what happened is the growth and the yield of the products were very, very uh, good that time when they started using and experimenting with. So this is something that can be explored because all this, uh, you know, plant growth, uh, plant uh, growth of the plant, they need, require certain nutrients, and this can be supplied by the nutraceuticals as well. So this was one example, and there can be uh, many more examples. And uh, since there is no spe specific guideline, we have to create our own framework, you know, with the knowledge and skills that we have, and based on that, we have to give a try. So looks like doc we lost the Dr. Tarun due to internet issues. Uh, I, I'm just expecting he joins back. And meantime, if you have any questions, uh, you know, we can please ask me. I'll try to answer. And do join the next session. Uh, Nick, every Saturday, we organize these webinars for the benefit of pharmacy professionals. All these webinars are free and there is no charges and there is no certificate provided, most importantly because we don't believe in certificates, we believe in knowledge here. And uh, knowledge is something that we want to share. And all the speakers that we bring are very experienced, at least 10 to 15 years experience. And uh, we try to get them on board and share their knowledge and experience with you. And for the benefit of the larger community of pharmacy. Okay, so uh, Dr. Tarun is back. I just hope, yes, he's back. Yes, Dr. Tarun is back. So, Dr. Tarun, there is one more question from Ramesh. Okay, he says, uh, Sir, could you please tell me as a pharmacist, what should we do and how? You are, you are well experienced in the biomedical and waste management field. So, please suggest something how we can do something little bit and it will help the biomedical waste management and also help the environment. So, this is a you know, question in the chat box. Yes, uh, this is a very good thing from a pharmacist. And uh, for Dr. Tarun, we are losing you. Uh, I think there is an uh, issue with the internet connection. But I want you to answer that question because you have been doing tremendous, uh, you know, wonderful job. Yes, the Dr. Tarun is back. So yes, Dr. Tarun, please. Uh, Mr. Ramesh, uh, like uh, you are a pharmacist and uh, you can understand all the ABC of uh, biomedical waste as well as of pharmaceutical waste. So uh, it is very much uh, what we can say expected from a pharmacist also to educate because like in India, our situation is quite uh, what we can say is limited to only dispensing of the medications only. Right. And we people never think about like we are B-Form graduate or we are M-Form and uh, we people don't think to interact with the community. Absolutely. And like if we start exploring this thing now, then definitely it will raise uh, our status also for the society. And like, if you need this presentation, then I will definitely share this presentation with all of you. And you can uh, like uh, explore all the things you read all the presentation. If you need any kind of a help, any kind of a support from my side, then I am okay with everything. You can ask me, I will deliver at like, uh, because uh, like these days we can connect online also. So it is a, it is not problem actually. So like once, like you are today, what I can think you are 20% aware today and please organize at least three to four sessions for the same. And I'm pretty much sure 
you will be 100% aware like in the coming 2 to 3 sessions then you can start like uh, this is a network system actually like uh, why we attend conferences why we attend seminars because of the some novel ideas like once we got the idea then we start we have to do the homework also then uh, like after this we can present like uh, uh, what we can do like uh, there are uh, some provision in some institution like if you are going for a seminar if you are going for a conference and uh, if you have presented your paper or if you have listened to some speaker then uh, like some institutions are funding uh, uh, like uh, they will fund the registration fees but what they will ask uh, they will ask you have to present this that particular topic in your institution for the students for the faculty members it is a kind of a fdp and it is a kind of a seminar for the students so similarly you have to do the same yes. you can take the help of uh, sir and me i am we are always ready yes we are always ready and in case you want to use this presentation or use this video and present in your own local language and need help for that please don't hesitate please use that and this this whatever information we are trying to share is all available in public domain the only thing that we are doing here is making it much organized and focused okay and adding little bit of our experience to that so that it is more flavored okay so thank you ramesh for asking that and thank you so much dr tarun for responding to that please be aware and please educate people you know there is so much of lack of awareness in the society about the usage of medications uh, usage of uh, uh, unused medications and managing this expired medicine is a very very troublesome problem okay and uh, you will not believe you know if you see the drainages which are there close to us you know everywhere if you see that kind of things that go into the drainage you will be shocked surprised and ultimately what is happening is uh, you know all this water is getting affected the environment is getting affected and we will be victim some day because of this uh, you know environmental pollution indirectly or directly all these you know the animals that feed on them uh, the air that you you know uh, take every single day the water gets polluted and we will be affected some day if not we you know maybe our generations will be definitely be affected for sure and we have already seen uh, you know started seeing the results of this you know hazardous chemicals and pollution so please be aware and start educating start doing your bit you know each of one one of us, uh, of us you know present here can take the owners or uh, ownership of uh, you know at least uh, making awareness to five families or 10 families and imagine you know 100 of us doing that we instantly change at least 500 families right and those 500 uh, families again uh, taking at least ownership of five families we get thousands of families changed so let's do our bit and you know keep attending these sessions and if you want any more information uh, we'll be more than happy to connect with you and help you out in whatever ways we can and uh, we are on uh, linkedin uh, if you do a google search you can connect with dr tarun and myself and we'll be more than happy to connect and discuss further so thank you so much for all your participation and i you know wholeheartedly thank all the participants and dr tarun specifically for you know spending so much of time with us and if you are free at two o'clock please join for another session that i'll be doing uh, in another one hour's time from now and this will be you know highlighting all the career opportunities uh, that marketing guys will have you know soon after b form and d form so if you're interested do join and every saturday at 2 pm you are most welcome to join these sessions which are completely free no certificates provided because learning is what we believe and learning is what we want to give okay so uh, and i have given the feedback link also to please uh, fill in the feedback link and help us understand what other topics you want us to you know uh, do in future so if you have any uh, questions i would love to you know answer otherwise maybe we'll close in next one minute's time so uh, sir i i want to ask one thing uh, yes sir like the session which is uh, like at uh, 2 pm so for that particular session uh, like we have to use the same link or uh, you can no there is a different link uh, you know those who are registered they would have already got the sms and email uh, not email only sms we send yes yes yes, yes. 
otherwise uh, what i can do is i'll try to send the link right away to you so you know just in case you want to attend please do attend sure sir, sure yeah just give me one moment so just in case you don't have the link uh, i'm just sharing the link for your all of your benefit here in the Yeah, so here is the link. Or uh, I'll just send the Zoom link directly. That is much better. Just give me one moment. I'm just pulling that link. So in case you have anything else, please, uh, Dr. Tarun, you can just continue for a few seconds. So uh, like I think uh, right now there are 28 participants. Uh, I want to personally uh, request everyone uh, like uh, as requested by sir also uh, like uh, please uh, start something and not only in the direction of uh, this uh, disposal of medications biomedical waste because we have a number of opportunities and number of options available and uh, like as uh, sir is doing a very noble cause actually uh, like uh, they are like uh, available on every saturday for, uh, with new topics actually and uh, this is a kind of a uh, what we can say social cause actually for the society because sir is a pharmacist that's why sir is thinking about the pharmacy uh, profession so like if you people uh, like uh, i think uh, most of us uh, are i think few of us are i think teachers also so i request two teachers actually uh, please uh, start uh, like uh, giving some ideas to your students or take some ideas from your students yeah. because it is a kind of a situation which is always win-win situation uh, because like if you have a knowledge then you can deliver to your students if you don't have idea then you can ask from the students because that is a very good connecting link actually between you and your students so Absolutely. sometime uh, your students will give you that particular idea which you have never think of so uh, please uh, like i want we want actually this type of questions or we uh, we need these types of uh, topics so that we can start exploring and uh, we can basically ask uh, sir also like uh, if uh, they will able to connect me again uh, like with the different uh, group of uh, basically uh, population uh, because you okay. are uh, what i can think you are 50 percent aware and uh, I want key uh, like um, maximum number of people can be uh, like aware by me. If you are with me, then definitely we can do. Sir, uh, I am always there, and every Saturday I am available. You know, for the day, entire day I spend for pharmacy professionals. Uh, morning I do one to ones for pharmacy professionals and pharmacy company, pharmaceutical companies. I help them uh, set up their digital strategies and make online presence and all of that. So basic education, whatever I can. And two o'clock is reserved for this webinar. Since we had two webinars today, so we shifted one webinar at 11 o'clock and one more at 2 o'clock. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, just wanted to do it more often because, uh, you know, we don't know how and when we can change somebody's life, right? So getting connected and staying connected is more important than ever today. And you know that, you know, your network is your net worth today, right? So this is for everyone. Your network is your net worth. So keep building your network and keep stay connected with people. Okay. That uh, is most important. We have, uh, I think in the option, in the participant list, uh, two experts, uh, one is Mr. Ashwani and one is Ms. Anjali. Uh, Ms. Anjali is expert in pharmacovigilance. She, uh, she is working with uh, Wipro as a pharmacovigilance associate. And the second one is Mr. Ashwani Sherpa, who is working uh, in the department of uh, MVN university only. And he is having experience of medical summarizing. Excellent. Okay. So I think uh, Mr. Ashwini and Ms. Anjali, uh, like uh, maybe uh, you can also uh, try some uh, session with the students. So definitely I have already put the my email ID in the chat box. So if you're interested, uh, please don't hesitate. You can also call me. Uh, most of you will have my number. Just in case you don't have, here it is for you. And uh, you can just drop me a message, WhatsApp, Telegram, anything that you want. And I'd love to interact with you. So these are the numbers. And uh, soon after the session, uh, by evening, you will get an SMS with uh, the recording of the video, uh, that entire session, and uh, also the feedback link. So don't uh, hesitate. Please share your feedback. And if you are interested to speak on any topic or you want to suggest somebody who can speak, 
or your college wants to organize this uh, session for their students uh, we'll love to do that okay and we can connect with different topics uh, not just uh, pharmaceutical waste uh, you know if you go to the link that i have shared uh, the youtube one you'll get about 20 or 30 different career options videos yes. for pharmacy professionals and these videos will help you to learn the basics and face the interview so like for example if you want to go into medical writing so you don't know what to where to start so this video, if you watch, it will get you an idea, you know, what happens in medical writing, what are the skills needed, which are the companies which are hiring, uh, how you should prepare for the interviews, and what are the basics you should, uh, you know, understand before, you know, getting into medical writing. So this is just one example. There are about 18, 20 videos, uh, you know, for different, different fields. Do watch them, do share with your friends, because at least that is the minimum thing that we can do to share, you know, some good information with our uh, uh, pharmacy friends and students so thank you so much uh, everyone for uh, being with us and you know you could have done so much things on a saturday morning like this and you stayed here and you know listened to us and interacted with us i really appreciate dr tarun you know for his efforts that he is taking and educating the pharmacy community and also the general public and i wish you know we could uh, you know give some uh, support to him at least by presenting this and getting connected to him and creating this awareness mass awareness to the society so let's do our bit and uh, stay in touch and we shall again meet at 2 p.m if you are joining or next saturday at 2 p.m or after that so stay connected and i wish you was you should wish you all a wonderful uh, day ahead so thank you uh, anjali madam for this uh, really appreciate thank you so much Thank you, Dr. Tarun. And with all your permission, I wish to close the session and I'll have to prepare for the two o'clock session. Sure, sure, so sir. thank you so much, thank all you of you. Sir. Pleasure is all mine, sir. Yeah, yeah. My pleasure, sir. And I appreciate everyone's presence here. And you'll all get an SMS with all the